studies have shown that most people give up on their New Year's resolution within the first few weeks. And while this gives New Year's resolution a bad rep, a lot of businesses set yearly targets during their planning and they take it seriously. So what's the difference? What gives? Turns out people don't fail because they lack motivation or willpower. There are four other mistakes that significantly influence the likelihood of hitting our personal yearly goals. And the first example that I've observed is the lack of clarity. Psychology professor Dr. Gail Matthews at the Dominican University in California led a study on goal setting with nearly 270 participants. The results, you are 42% more likely to achieve your goals if you write them down. Now, you might have written goals down before and still struggle with them, I know I do. The key difference here is the specificity of your goals. Setting a vague goal like be more fit or lose more weight apparently just doesn't work. It's not enough. I cringe when I first heard this concept and I can't believe I'm actually recommending this to you now, but I find SMART goals to be really effective. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. I can probably make an entire video on just this topic alone, but let's take a quick example of our previous vague goal of lose more weight. If we turn this into a SMART goal, it would be something like be healthier and lose 10 kilograms in the next 12 months. Now, if I break down this goal, it's clear that it's specific. I know what you intend to do, which is lose weight. It's measurable. I can use a weighing machine to check on your progress of losing 10 kilograms. It's also achievable because 10 kilograms feels more realistic than 30 kilograms, for example. Relevant? Yes, because weight loss is relevant to the goal of be healthier. And lastly, time bound. The aim is to hit this goal within the time frame of 12 months. There is an end date to it. It's not infinity. So the point is, a clear goal will help us to come up with a proper plan, which is important because that way we can tackle that goal consistently which leads nicely to the second mistake, lack of consistency. A lot of times we look at our big goals on day one and we get really excited, oh yeah. Then day two comes and it starts to get less exciting, but okay, then one week passes and it becomes a slog. But after one month, it becomes just too daunting and we just give up. But what if we break down that big goal into smaller chunks? Instead of thinking losing 10 kilograms every day when we wake up, what if we think about losing one kilogram every month? What if we make tiny improvements every day for 365 days, which is a whole year? In his book, Atomic Habits, James Clear mentioned how small changes are often underestimated because they don't seem to matter at the moment. He shared the concept of getting 1% better every day and use a graph to show improvement over time. If you look at his graph, if you get 1% better each day for one whole year, you will end up with 37 times better results, which is incredible. He also gave another example that just blew my mind. Imagine if you're flying from LA to New York City. If the pilot leaving LAX adjusts the heading by just 3.5 degrees south, turns out you'll land in Washington DC instead. That's about an hour's flight worth of just being off target. So we really underestimate how much small incremental consistent improvements can either make us better or make things worse. So the tip here is to avoid giving up on your goals, try breaking tasks into smaller manageable chunks and establish a consistent routine or schedule for working on your goals. By the way, if you wanna save some time, check out my yearly planner and goal tracker template. I spend 400 hours building, testing and optimizing the system. It's structured in a way to help you break down your big goals into smaller monthly targets and then having a task manager to break down those targets into daily tasks as well. Link in the description below. The next mistake is lack of adaptability. Let's be real. Sometimes our plans don't work out. I want to publish one video a week on this channel last month, but eh, life got in the way. I got sick a few days and that was more than enough to derail my plans. So the same goes with anything else you do in life. You probably plan to work out in the gym every day in order to hit your fitness goals, but work demanded some extra attention and you didn't do it. Or maybe you had a plumbing issue and all of a sudden you have to go deal with that first. If not, you're gonna have a flooded home. 
Or maybe your kid decided to throw a tantrum that made it difficult for you to even leave the house and head to the gym. Whatever the reason is, our plans get derailed all the time. And when our plans get derailed, we give up on our goals. I was guilty of this myself until I discovered the concept of reframing failures as lessons. Thomas Edison famously said, I have not failed. I just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Nelson Mandela also said, I never lose. I either win or learn. Mm, love that one. Now, recognizing that failure is part of the process doesn't really eliminate my frustration or my stress, but it made me more adaptable. Flexibility is not a sign of weakness, but a hallmark of resilience. Adjust, adapt, and advance. Angela Duckworth. But in order to adapt, we need to first reflect. Spending some time to reflect gives us the opportunity to understand what happened, why did it happen, and finally, what can I do to adjust my plans in order to still hit my goals? Ever since I started my business, I've put aside some time to do a monthly retrospective in Notion. I've talked about this in my previous video. I'll leave a link for you in the description so you can watch that later in case you haven't seen that. But anyway, the tool doesn't matter as much as the act of doing it. If you haven't done any form of reflection, I highly recommend it. It has changed my life in so many ways as I've gained more clarity to course correct mid-flight instead of waiting until the end of the time frame, and then things just fall apart and it's too late by then, right? In fact, on top of the monthly retrospective, I'm also starting a journaling habit where I write about my day. I'm hoping that by doing this, I can better process my emotions and think more clearly. I'll be sharing more about the experiment in my future videos, so subscribe and hit the bell icon in case you haven't already. The fourth mistake is something I've been struggling with the most lack of accountability. To address this, I'm experimenting with two tactics. One, having a scoreboard, and number two, publicly declaring my goals and progress. Let's look at the first one, which is having a scoreboard. In the book, The Four Disciplines of Execution, the authors introduced the concept of creating a compelling scoreboard to track progress of our goals. The idea is with the scoreboard, even when we're behind, it encourages us to improve in order to hit our targets. The scoreboard should be the most simplest, most visible thing. Remember that what you leave off your scoreboard is more important than what you put on it. You don't want to clutter it with too many information and details that you lose track of the most important things. So what I've done is I've created a simple progress tracker in my second brain in Notion. At a glance, I can easily see which targets are behind and which are on track. I've even grouped them based on colors and areas. So if you're interested to learn more about how to build this, I'll leave a link to my tutorial in the description so you can check it out. The next thing is publicly declaring my goals and progress. I've started to have meetups with my friend Billy, who is also working on his own projects. We share what we've done, what we've learned, and what we're going to do next. I severely underestimated how powerful these accountability meetups can be. Like we will get a huge dose of positive energy and excitement just by sharing our progress. Even when we're struggling with our goals and we're failing a bit behind, the lack of judgment actually allows us to be transparent about our journey, which is something I appreciate. And there's always a new thing that we'll learn from each other, right? And hey, you know it's a good sign when you exceed the time frame of the meeting. Like we always overextend and spend more time laughing about certain things and catching up. In the past, I was guilty of overthinking the complexities of these meetups. I had thoughts such as, you know, what if people might judge my work? What if people don't show up? What if we get off topic? The antidote was to actually just keep it as simple as possible when starting a new habit like this. We just texted each other and say, you know what, let's just agree to meet up for just an hour at a cafe, open our laptops and start sharing what we've worked on. And over time, we naturally start to think about introducing a little bit more structure into our conversations. But just by showing up, we're already adding accountability into our process. So if you're thinking of doing the same and you want to start your own accountability meetup, just stick to the basics. Find the easiest first step. Just show up. Everything else will fall into place, I guarantee you. By the way, if you want to use Notion to set clearer goals and create monthly reflections to track your progress, check out this video next.